Owning a restaurant was these people's dream. We've always said we'll start a restaurant. Some invested everything. We put 50,000 into the business. Busting their guts to make it work. The priority is to pay my staff. I do have sleep this night. But it's a ruthless business. Four minute steaks for table five. It's an element of survival. We've just been living off credit cards. I can't pay my bills. I'm so completely consumed. I've seen him in tears. I've seen him not be able to eat. It's business or marriage. And with so many big brands crowding the high street, the pressure is greater than ever. I don't know how we're going to cope. I'm Alex Polizzi. Hello, hello. Having set up and managed successful restaurants around the world... Let's get on with it, then. Yeah. I want to try and help struggling owners sort out theirs. You want to entice people in. It's too big because that slows down service, doesn't it? It does. It'll be practical to have it here and it will separate off the room a bit. You obviously struggle with customers at lunchtime, can't yeah. you? We're going to have to unpick this. It won't be easy. No, mate, no. I think it's the nerves that are getting the better of me. But if I can bring some inspiration... Why don't you do an offer and say, subscribe to the supper club? And they, some hard work and determination... Chicken tikka, one puri. Excited to get it to work for us. There you go. It feels a lot more curated as a menu. It's awesome. amazing. Can I turn things around and leave them a lasting legacy? Look at this. Are you happy? Absolutely. And this is what a restaurant should be like. I love it. I'm seeing what we could do and be more positive about it. Check. The restaurant feels it's got a brighter future. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs>it was one of the first proper gastro pubs in the city when suddenly gastro pubs became all the rage. So really we had a kind of a monopoly for a while and we were the, like the first of our kind and people really loved us. But now we're faced with a, a high street full of chains and more and more are coming. Within a mile radius of us here at the pub, there is a minimum of 50 other eateries, cafes, bars, restaurants. I absolutely love Exeter. I've seen it change so much over the years. 2004, my mum bought a hotel down here, not very far away from the city. And in 2007, suddenly, they started all this development. With this number of people on the streets, with the success of Exeter, you would think that having a food business here is a no-brainer. You would think. But the city's growing number of restaurants has produced intense competition, now putting the odd fellows under the cosh. Up to year six, we ended up having a 10 to 15% net profit. The last couple of years, it was about 2%, and the year just gone, we made a loss. When your lunches are very, very quiet, you are constantly, you are, you're constantly doubting whether you're doing the right thing, whether your offering is correct. It's make or break at the moment. I was really nervous this morning. I was a bit like, oh my God, it's D-Day day. I am looking forward to Alex arriving because Ivan and I are so immersed in our business. Sometimes I think you can't see the wood for the trees. Mm. We're not perfect, and that's why we need some help. Getting this place into shape to try and crack the competition won't be easy, and there's no time to lose. Hello, hello. Morning. Hi. Hi. How are you? Very nice I'm to meet you. I'm good, I'm Faye. Hi. Hi, yeah. Alex, I'm Ivan. I'm Ivan. Welcome to the Odd Fellows. So, how long have you had it? 11 years. Living the dream? Oh, yes. Always. <laughs> Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Ish. yeah. <laughs> Good days, bad days, great weeks, crap weeks. This industry is uh it can be a lot of fun and it also can be really tough. So there's still there's still love and there's still joy, but it's getting really it's getting tougher and it's getting tougher year on year. 
we're going to have to work out what it what yeah, the problem exactly. is, yeah, and sure. that's going to involve some criticism. That's okay. Yeah. We can take constructive criticism. We'll have a coffee and sit down. Yeah. But first yeah. of all, can I just have a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay, sure. great. When we first opened, we didn't have children, and we had fun. We had lots of fun. Yeah. You know, it was hedonistic. We partied. We had to watch our pennies, but we, you know, we had we had money back then. We had disposable income. I can't even remember what that's like now. Kitchen is, it's like a theatre. It's really, really open. Now I think it just feels a bit grown up and it's a bit heavy. There's lots of responsibility, you know, and when you start looking at your money thinking, mm, this isn't really doing as well as we would like it to, um, for one reason or another, then it starts to make you question what you're doing. This is your daily menu. This is our lunchtime daily menu, yeah. Yeah, it's quite meaty. I don't know, I don't think, is it that meaty? The mains are, I mains guess. Are, yeah. The mains are, the mains definitely are. Nice! Gosh, it's another huge room. Here it is. I don't mind working hard, but I'd actually like to spend some time with my wife, um, my children. It's a really nice room. Thank you. I want to prove that I can do this, and at the moment there's times when I feel that I'm not doing it very well. It's an element of survival. Before I arrived, I looked over the Odd Fellows accounts, which quickly highlighted the restaurant's trading weak spot. You obviously struggle with customers at lunchtime. God, yeah, yeah that's our yeah, that's our worst time. Absolutely. And actually, yeah. when we opened, people really enjoyed us being here, and we were, you know, we were very busy during lunchtime and evenings. As soon as Princess Hay opened up, yes. it affected our lunchtime trade there, and then instantly. It, instantly. Mm from going to doing 30 to 40 lunches down to 10. Making the Oddfellows competitive again will be a tough challenge. And if I'm to try and help secure its future, I'm going to need an expert helping hand. I have asked Oliver Payton to come and help me on the food side. Yeah. Oliver has more than 20 years experience running restaurants and constructing menus so his expertise will be priceless. He knows an awful lot about food, and it helps. he's my brother-in-law. Let's eat. Cool. Yes. Unbeknown to any of the Oddfellows staff, a few days ago, I sent Oliver along with some local food bloggers to feedback on a midweek lunchtime. I've got him to give some comments to me. Hi, Alex. Uh, I'm on my way to Oddfellows. I'm on a pretty unassuming street, which is where Oddfellows is on. He's going with the bloggers. We're going to check it out, tell you what we think. But I gotta say, it looks pretty quiet. But I'll let you know. Well, we were a very strange start. We came in and we sat down on our own. The greeting was very poor. No one's really serving us. It's really yeah. taking 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes to place our order. It's lunchtime. You know. A bit quiet. I have to whisper a little bit. I'm not gonna put on weight with that salad, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Yeah. The menu, that the menu needs a real complete revamp. In my Star Trek, I, I couldn't even see it. It was like a garnish. Plus, I mean, it took forever. I stopped counting how long it took. It's over an hour and a half. I don't know if I'm shocked or if I'm just really disappointed. Well, it's because frustrating. I, because, because in my heart, I really feel I didn't think that would happen here. Oliver's lunch experience has surprised Ivan and Faye, exposing a slow service and an unsuitable menu. That's his impression. I think the thing that he was really shocked in was it was so quiet and they had bad service. We drum it into them at quiet times. It's important that you do a lot of cleaning, that you make... Yeah, you don't want to be paying someone for no. just having Exactly, so that's something we've really drummed into them. But if they're doing that and then neglecting the customers that we are having in, then that's fatal. It's, you know, that's not who we are. It means what we're doing isn't working. We're not keeping on top of the people that we employ to act in our absence because we're at home dealing with children or, you know, blah, 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 then that's where the, that's where the missing links are, isn't it, I think, as well. What are your roles in the business? My role has evolved over the years because we've had two little ones. But I guess, yes, I was always front of house. I tend to do staff training. Um, I tend to do social media, marketing, that kind of stuff. Are you good at doing that? I get by. I wouldn't say I'm amazing. I, 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 amazing. Use, I use what skills I have to do what I feel I need to do. Yeah, I think I could always learn more, definitely. I'm more the financial side, looking after stocks, looking after purchasing. He yeah. never stops. He never, ever stops. From the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep, he's literally 
odd fellows, odd fellows, odd fellows, odd fellows. It's a familiar story. Owners overloading themselves with the duties of running the restaurant, with a van appearing to have taken on a lion's share. The question is whether he's using his time effectively. So I brought you out here because I just yeah. wanted you to look at your place and try and imagine that you haven't seen it before. I get the impression that taking on so much responsibility has meant Ivan is no longer able to see the bigger picture. And I think that you're not really showing off what's special no. about you from the outside. Yeah. Your A boards aren't very nice. No. I hate the coffee roastery sign. And it's all a bit cluttered. I think that one of my things is going to be to try and give it a bit more curbside yeah. appeal. Perfect. Um, because you want someone to come along and be excited about coming here, yeah. rather than think, oh my gosh, dare I step over the threshold. Yeah. It's a funny combination of kind of, you're not sure if it's a pub or a restaurant. To stand out from the crowd and compete for lunchtime customers, we'll need to declutter and clean up those mixed messages to get the odd fellows looking like a place you'd like to eat. My first impressions are mixed. I like Faye and Ivan, but the truth is, they need a bit of a <laughs> Azuz. I wonder how much they've actually changed, how much they've transformed the place in 11 years. You need to have fire in your belly. This is going to be a big challenge. I've been called to help the Odd Fellows. Owners Ivan and Faye are struggling to compete with the bigger restaurants to pull in the lunchtime crowd, which is leaving them stretched. This is a van all over, actually. You, you'll be in the middle of doing something and you'll find him doing something really random like this. We had some maintenance people in and, yeah, it didn't really work. So I ended up actually redoing the job on some of the stuff. If I'm going to do it, I do it pretty well. 90% of our time is taken up. Paperwork, admin, bill paying. Troubleshooting, problem solving, repairing things, checking the bank accounts. The couple have seen midweek lunch trade plummet, crippling any chance of making a profit. Along with acclaimed restaurateur Oliver Payton, I've come up with a strategy to kickstart a revival. Oh, there's an email come through from Alex. Hello, Evan and Faye. Um, the next time I return, I will be with Oliver and we would like you both to prepare a menu for lunch with one meat and one vegetarian option. The meals must include food and drink for £10 or less, and you should prepare to cater for 20 to 30 lunch covers. The chain restaurants see success targeting shoppers on the high street, but we think there is a lunch crowd right on Ivan and Faye's doorstep. Please keep service times in mind as we'll be reaching out to the local business community. So, business community, no worries. The challenge is upon us. I don't think that's much of a challenge, yeah. do you? The Oddfellows sits just off the high street in a district full of office workers. We think this could be an untapped market, providing the food offer is right and can be served within an hour's lunch break. Hello, good morning, Hello. Faye. Hi. Hi, darling. Nice to see you. I've got no hidden camera today. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to see is whether we can revive a lunch trade. Yeah. And I thought the best way to do it is to see whether we can get people in what they think of the food, whether it's a the price they want, whether you're still making a profit from yeah. it, all of those things. We know that you were you were fully involved in the business to start yeah. with, on the floor. We know that that has become more of a managerial role. We'd both like to see you back 100%. in the midst of it. Can you just give me 10 minutes to find out where all the buttons are on the till again? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we've decided to divide and conquer, and Oliver will take the back and I'll take the front of house. Yeah. Okay. So but I'm going to go and try and find some people to drag in here for lunch, yeah. which I'm sure won't be that hard. No. Um, so what are you going to do? You're going to go knock on the doors of local businesses? Yeah. Literally? Yeah. All right. Faye seems sceptical of my persuasive powers, but I'm convinced there could be a lunch market out there. First and obvious place to try is the estate agents opposite. Hi, hi. Hello. hello. I'm Alex Polizzi. I'm working with the Oddfellows down there. Have you guys ever been? I've never been, no. Why not? I'm not sure. I didn't actually even know it was a restaurant in there. Oh, you are kidding me. <laughs> I thought it was a bar. It seems the local office workers, too, agree with my observation of the Oddfellows looking just like a pub. Back in the kitchen, Oliver is keen to know what Faye thinks will be suitable for their £10 lunch menu. As they say, what's cooking? What's on the menu? So today we've got a minute steak with a shop puree, bacon and thyme butter, 
and just a few pea shoots and a fondant potato, sorry. Vegetarian uh, dish we have is a halloumi burger with a sweet garlic chutney and a sun-dried tomato salad. What do you consider when you're choosing these dishes? Uh, popularity, the kind of things that people like to eat. Steak is obviously one of the most popular dishes. As British, we like we like steak, don't we? And then halloumi um, is a personal favourite of mine. Do you think it's appropriate for lunchtime, right? Yeah, I do. I think it'd be interesting to see how these dishes go today. You know, I'm fascinated to see yeah, how they yeah. go. I think I'll try some of these. There are an estimated 750 office workers along this road alone. If we can develop our strategy to attract them during the week... So, come and help us. Thank you. It could be an answer to their lacklustre lunchtime trade. Good. That's a few more people slowly mounting up, but we need more than that. All right, guys, Alex is already drumming up business, so I will see you on the other side. Good luck. Thank you very much. OK, so there's eight of you. I've got a large table three. Do you want to follow me? We'll get you some drinks. It's nice. A few more people than I'm used to seeing in here. And I might have to take your food order if you're ready with that. Yeah. Today is an opportunity to see if the Oddfellows can be a quick turnaround place to eat at lunchtime and cater for the office crowd. Two steaks. How do they want the steaks cooked, Chef? All the minute steaks go out as a medium unless requested. It's also a chance to see if Ivan and Faye understand what customers want and to reignite the fire in their bellies. What they are good with is people, and I think seeing them interact with their customers is, you know, does really show off their skill set. Where's, where's chips? Where's chips? Don't go away, Ben. 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 <laughs> so I'm waiting on another one on there. Is that ready? Yeah. How's it going? It's going fine, I think. What about a bit of upselling? Go on, see if you can flog them another beer. Can you flog them another beer? Oh, yeah, of course beer? I can. Let me do this for a while. Don't Go on, Go on. I'm not patronising it. How long are the next four minute steaks for table five? This really feels like something they haven't done in a very long time. Do you need more beer? You look like a man who needs more beer. <laughs> and please, go on in, darling. Push on, push on, come on. You knew it was coming, and here it is. Yeah. It's arrived. This, this was the lunches that we used to do. Yeah. So we just yeah, carry on, really. It's great to see Ivan's enthusiasm as he handles the busy service with ease. But to have the steak and halloumi £10 dishes met customers' expectations. What do you normally eat at lunch? Uh, salad. A salad. Uh, sandwich or soup or something like that. Yeah, a salad. I think that whole tempan meal deal is just not right. You know, the dishes aren't correct. How did you think it went? I think it went well. I, I, I think the first thing here is, you know, you, to me, it's the menu at lunchtime. There's an obvious demand for uh, healthier food at lunchtime. Yeah. We've got the feedback, so now we know that actually the odd fellows needs to start thinking a little bit more about people wanting to eat a bit more healthily. You have to change the menus. What I thought was amazing was you are amazing hosts. People, yeah. You like people. Yeah. People like you. No, yeah. It was really fun to see you guys interact with people. I think there's an amount of energy which you're going to have to put in yeah. now on Absolutely. the floor, which is going to take you away from you know, being together yeah. or doing family stuff together and things like that, which, which I think has to be done to compete with what, what's going on around there. One question I have when we're talking about spending a bit more time on the shop floor is yeah. that you need a certain amount of admin time and that seems mm. to be at least two or three days otherwise you can't but is that keep on top of everything because i'm juggling money i'm trying to keep the business going but actually not being in the business i've seen him in tears i've seen him white with stress i've seen him not be able to eat and i always get upset about it because i don't know you have decided that this is what is most important and if you're saying that you're going to get back on the shop floor, I don't know how we're going to cope, or how you're going to cope. I don't know. I don't know, Faye. And this is this is it that I've created a mountain. Maybe. I, I think. But that, that is probably mountain. if you can sort that out with him, then you would probably crack half of this business. We're going to have to unpick this. It's not easy seeing Faye upset, but hardly surprising. This is the business they've successfully built from scratch. 
So along with developing a plan to combat quiet lunch times, we'll need to tackle the effectiveness of how Ivan and Faye spend their time running the business. The challenge ahead is terrifying. I mean, let's face it, they've had a long time to get into this rut, and it's going to take a bit to shake them out of it, and there's no overnight solutions. But at least they can make a start by using the lunch test feedback to begin developing a new lunchtime menu. What did you want with that? I don't know yet. Okay. I need to I need to do a little bit of research. I need to see what's in season. When we spent a day with Oliver here, he suggested that we should make some changes to our lunch menu. Um, so at the moment, he didn't, sort of he say didn't really give exactly us an idea. No, though. he hasn't really given us an idea of what he feels would be a good direction for the odd fellows to go in in terms of our lunch trade. So I'm kind of fumbling around a bit in the dark at the moment. Keen to get on the right track, Faye hopes a call to Oliver will shed some light. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Oliver, it's Faye at the Oddfellows. Hey, Faye, so what's occurring? You mentioned that you felt we should have some healthier options on, some more... Lady-friendly op options, less heavy. Appropriate for those people who might be having... ...a speedy lunch to get back to work. But I'm struggling to... Interpret what is it you're asking of me, I think. To write a lunch menu with a salad on it and a few bits and pieces is not a big deal in my mind. If I'm really honest with you, I think I've misunderstood the task. OK, so have you got an idea about how you would like to run the... Uh restaurant going forward. Of course I have a vision because it's what we, we do all the time. This is what I don't understand. I'm finding hard. All I'm asking you to do... So I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm, not, I'm getting really upset. And I'm going to call it there. The business is their life and livelihood, so Faye's emotions are understandable. But to avoid negative feelings, Oliver calls back to clear the air. Hello. Faye, it's Oliver. Hello, Oliver. Hi. I really want to... I want to help you. I appreciate that. I do. You know, the reasons why... It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I feel much more complicated than a quick telephone conversation. That's fine. It doesn't and matter. I... It really doesn't matter. All that matters is I'm here to help. Don't worry about the reasons why. That's great. Thank you for that. All right. Great. All right. Take Thanks, care. Oliver. I'll talk bye. to you soon. Yeah, bye. Two people for dinner. Let me just try and find a pen. There's the pen. I've been called to the Oddfellows, where owners Ivan and Faye are battling poor profits with quiet lunch times and intense competition, which has left them exhausted and chasing their tails. When we first started, we were the only place near the high street where you could get a really good lunch. But now there are 25 chain eateries on the high street. With the busy family life behind the scenes and running the restaurant, it's stretching the couple to the max. To reinvigorate Ivan and Faye and provide some inspiration, I've brought them to London. Today is all about rebuilding Ivan and Faye's confidence. I feel like last time Oliver and I were in Exeter, we battered them. Partly because we're so passionate about what we do, but also because we want to remind them why they got into this in the first place. We want to revive the passion. And I think they've lost their way a bit, Ivan and Faye. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'd like to encourage them to discover it again. Hi, darling. Hello, how are you? Hi. Hi, how are you? Mwah. Take a seat. Thank you. Very much. So, the reason I brought you to London is because this is the place that the, the idea of the gastro pub began, yeah. you know, 26 years ago. Yep. There was no such thing as a gastro pub. I want to remind you of the fact that independent restaurants can work and how they do. Yeah. And I wanted to bring you to here to some places who are doing, who are nailing it. Yeah. OK. There are plenty of excellent gastro pubs in London, but I've brought Ivan and Faye to what's been credited as the very first one, the Eagle. So can I ask the first question? You're still full, you're still really busy. How do you continue to get customers? Um, by being ourselves, I think. Um, by being really good, good food, good value for money. We're just into it. We love it. And um, I think that's, that's terribly important. You've got, to be, you've got to love what you're doing. Michael Belbin established the Eagle 26 years ago. As the owner, he knows the importance of being the face of the business. Are you still here all the time? I'm here more than I should be, I think. 
before. Is there anything you'd have changed over the years? No. We knew exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to serve really good, high-quality food in really scruffy surroundings because scruffy surroundings are not intimidating. I completely agree with you, actually. That's kind of how we feel, too. You've it's seen a... 26 years of success, so there is merit to yeah. sticking to your guns and being who you are. How much does the food change, Michael? I've looked at old menus. It's always changed a lot. So our first chef was a Brazilian, so we got lots of Brazilian ideas from him. Um, we've got a chef who's just joined us and has introduced us to Eastern Mediterranean food. Your menu basically goes on who's cooking. So you've morphed it a long way. Taken their family background of what how they've been brought up. Yeah. To put that into the menu. Yeah. Which do you find that brings more passion to what they're doing? Oh, there's huge passion. Two smoked salmon and scrambled eggs, please. Next, I want to introduce them to the new kid on the block. Award-winning chef Jesse Dunford Wood opened the Parlour Gastro Pub four years ago. So this is the heartbeat of the business. We do lots of butchery, we make lots of bread, we make everything from chocolate, smoked salmon and all sorts of things like that. Jesse knows the importance of regular local customers and how to engage them. Accessibility is a really key point in order to keep a broad range of the community happy. Are you here all the time, Jesse? Yeah, that's another unfortunate part of it. Just like Michael, Jesse is a regular face within the running of his business, especially at lunch times, which can be extremely busy thanks to some clever yet simple marketing. Where are all these people who are here at lunch from? We have quite strong links with a few local companies. But on a Tuesday, the guys in the office, they email the weekly menus so they get circulated amongst the powerful people within the company, and when they want to book a table at Parlour, they can call ahead 15 minutes or three hours ahead, saying, we'll be here at one o'clock, this is our pre-order for 18 people. Uh, and, no time and, to waste. And, and they get their hour break and they get their food immediately That's when they walk That's a great idea, door. actually, to email out the menus. I like that. Yeah. It's great to see Faye enthusiastic and sounding positively open as to how they can evolve their business. Today was all about inspiring Faye and Ivan. They need to be enthused and passionate and selling themselves and their place in a, in a much more effective way from what they've achieving at the moment. And I think bringing them somewhere like this shows them that it is kind of within their grasp. It's not a million miles away. Um, and just reminding them too that there's people who are sacrificing and living a life just like they are and who can still manage to enjoy it. <laughs> well, that was pretty inspiring, wasn't it? Yeah, that was amazing. Very nice place. Good, so it was worth coming. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, totally. yeah. With Ivan and Faye clearly upbeat, finally I want to see how effective the Oddfellows is with social media. After you, Faye. To maximise the opportunity of engaging with any locals, a strong social presence will be vital. And the person who can help is social media specialist Krista Booker. What I'd like you to do is tell me what your company is, but write it in um, keywords. A recent survey by a well-known chain restaurant discovered that 30% of 18 to 35-year-olds would avoid a restaurant if their Instagram presence wasn't strong enough. So, independent. British food. British food. And I like this thing about the character. So let's see if your social channels represent that. We've yeah. done all this with professionals before, and no yeah. one's done this. OK. Oh, do we have to look at the website? Sorry, sorry. It's very corporate. Oh, I hate it now. But you can see immediately how, you know, this idea we had in our heads, now when you look at that, it just doesn't have yeah. that warmth. OK, Instagram. People don't look at Instagram to read words. They want to see beautiful pictures. pictures. I have an example here of a restaurant, but you can see that they've stuck to it's a style. Consistent. It's consistent. They use the same colours. Just from looking there, you can imagine what well, it will be pretty. like. It's mm. really pretty. So the photography is really key, isn't it? Yeah. With 18 to 35-year-olds reportedly spending five days a year browsing food images on Instagram alone, making sure Ivan and Faye get the best out of their photos will be key. But what you could do here, this is really good for slow motion because you're really showing him like the hot skill of it. I really like both Ivan and Faye. I've kind of enthused and revived them because I felt that they were very flat when I first met them. And the most important thing is for them to feel like this is still something they want to do, because this isn't a job you can do half-heartedly.
Yeah. I like the last one. That one's good. I'm going to certainly look at having a more consistent thread through the social media images and things like that, and how to how to target people and and stuff. So yeah, it's it's been it's been interesting. It's been a learning curve. Today has been a great opportunity for Ivan and Faye to take a step back and reimagine their business. Now we need to take a similar, fresh look at their working day. Having already established Ivan is stretching himself thin with all his duties running the business, I've set them a task to make them start thinking productively about his priorities. Firstly, write a list of all the tasks that Ivan gets involved with in his role at Oddflares on a weekly basis. How long have you got? Place each task under the heading of A, B or C, assuming that A, jobs for the owner, B, day-to-day, -day, medium jobs, open up cleaning, maintenance, C, nice to have done, small jobs, touch up paint, changing displays, etc. OK, let's do your A jobs first. Organised meetings with accountants. That's Many there. development, yeah. Menu stuff on there. Inquiries. Oh, yeah. Ordering. I did the ordering, so that goes under B. Then uh, supplier inquiries. That again goes into me. Got rid of all the old one pound points. Yes. <laughs> the next thing. Now rip up all the C's. <laughs> These tasks are not an immediate priority. I would really like to repair the latch on the fire escape. That would make me happy. I'd like to go up in the loft and have a bit of sort out up there. These jobs are luxuries if they have the spare time but non-essential and not worth Ivan's limited hours. Now, taking the B column, how much time do you spend on these tasks per week? Add that figure onto the item. So, organised repairmen, that's at least one hour a week. Yeah. Suppliers, that's at least two hours a week. Answering inquiries. Oh, hours. That's like two hours a day at the moment. So let's put ten. There you go. Do the same for the A column, thank you. OK. Booking events. That, that can take up to four hours yep. a week. By taking just an hour to analyse everything he's been doing, it's shown there are a lot of jobs that he needs to delegate. I'm earning my money there. Yeah. The task B is are basically not. saying they should be somebody else's job. Yeah. Freeing up those jobs will enable Ivan to spend more time at the restaurant, which should bring real momentum back to the business. Last time we caught up, our website wasn't that good. Um, so we've been working on a new website. So this is showing how it opens and reads on a phone. That was the thing that we, our website was so old, it, it wasn't compatible with mobiles or tablets. And it's not just Ivan who's feeling inspired. Faye has been giving the lunch menu a makeover too. Taking on Oliver's feedback, it's no longer meat heavy with more appropriate light lunch dishes. The guys are just cleaning down after lunch service and then we are having a bit of a cook-off with some of the new dishes for the lunch menu. So we're going to bring out some of the dishes for everyone to try. I'm going to photograph them as well for website social media. So this is soup and small salad. The avocado, the eggs are in. And we'll go with the, the house salad, yeah? Yep. Oh, that looks good. The menu is good and it's different. Um, should be fun, I think. That's really lovely. We're happy with that. More lighter, a bit more healthier as well, so. Here we have the Devon plate. It's looking very, very nice, actually. In just a few days' time, the Oddfellows will launch its new lunchtime menu. And this is an ideal opportunity for the staff to taste some of the new, simpler dishes. So, yeah, eat. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. <laughs> I do you like the platter? I think it's lovely, isn't it? It looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. It's a burger. Really good. If this doesn't work, we're going to close for lunch forever. Amazing. I think this is our best shot at getting it right. I'm happy with the menu. I'm happy with the deals that we've got going on. You know, the place is looking lovely. And if they don't want to come now, they're never going to want to come. Just a couple of months ago, I was called to help the Oddfellows, an independent gastro pub in Exeter. An uninspiring lunchtime trade was leaving owners Ivan and Faye battling sliding profits. 
Do you think we could give up a bit? Do you think we had kind of given up no, a bit? No, never. No, I mean on weekday lunch. Never! Week. Never give up! Never! There you go. Yes. Yeah, just use that. But today could be the start of a midday revival as the Oddfellows launches a new lighter lunch menu, simpler to prepare and quicker to serve. I'm quite nervous today. <laughs> I just want everything to work. Inspired by knowing they could potentially engage with hundreds of office workers right on their doorstep, Ivan and Faye have been working with Oliver to develop an appropriate menu. We have been working and adapting recipes to make sure that we can serve business people quickly so they can get back to work. And taking great advice from Jesse at the parlour, they're trying new ways of reaching out to entice local businesses. Uh, the, the system's in place to receive the pre-order, so we went round to the offices, they had the menu, which has the email address on there. They say what time they want the table, how many people, they can also put all their dietary requirements on there and uh, make it quite simple. I think today is our chance to find out from Faye and Ivan whether they've got the junk in the trunk to kind of push this business forward. If they can make the lunches work, that we will find out. Have they done enough for today would be my question. Look, this looks really nice, doesn't it? Nice menu books. Straight away, it's encouraging to see the new menu on display to entice passers-by. I like the new craft paper. That all feels so yeah. much better. Well, I think the menu sounds really good, you know. Along with the new menu box, a subtle makeover now helps establish this being a restaurant as well as a pub. Simple yet clever window graphics set a theme while catching the eye. New stylish lights and a fresh splash of colour help smarten up the exterior while inside some quirky touches help reinforce the odd fellow's identity. Hello. Oh, hi, darling. Nice Hello. to see you. How are you doing? It looks great from outside. Hi, how are you? It does. We've concentrated our fire on the front, but I think yeah. it works. Yeah, it does. I think the front looks a lot better. It really does. It Good. I'm glad. And what else have you been up to? Gosh, what have we been doing? We've been, we've been fiddling with websites. We've been pounding the streets, talking to local businesses. So we've done a new menu. lunch menu, evening menu, so we've yeah. been running that. It looked very nice. Yeah. The fact now that there's a much more diverse selection, they're much more appealing to a broader base, I think that's going to make a real difference in the long term. OK, let's get on with it then. Yeah, let's do it. Right. roll on. It already sounds like Ivan and Faye have new fire in their bellies. So let's hope their modest new menu will now help spark a regular lunch trade. So £10 plus a drink, that must put a lot of pressure on your margins. It does, but it's not, it's not too bad. It's, you know, it's, it's tight, but it's, I think it's all about volume and reintroducing people back into the Oddfellows, so it's a, sure. it's a sweet deal. Faye and Ivan seem really on it today. And I, I really want this to work for them. I want them to see a way forward because, you know, there's nothing more pressing than being open and there not being enough people in your restaurant. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Welcome to the Oddfellows for lunch. Thank you. I think today is a super important test because to make lunchtime work, you have to be here. If you're not here, it's not going to work. These people want to see the owners. It's a local restaurant. You cannot be absent. The test today will be to see if the lunch customers think the new menu is appropriate. More importantly, can the dishes be prepared and served efficiently to cater for an hour's lunch break? We have worked hard to get to this day. It's kind of, um, I think we had certainly sat on our laurels a little bit when it came to lunch service and I am feeling re-energised and more engaged with our lunch offering and um, pushing it forward so I, it's going to be really nice, I, I just really hope it goes well today. If it doesn't you can find me in the toilet crying somewhere. And I think I'll be for the fish and chips please. Mark, we're all ready to go on this. Come on, I'll pop you, you're in the snug you guys I believe. So just to make sure that we are actually getting the tables in there as quickly as possible, I'm going to keep an eye on the time limits. So I've got the salad that no goat cheese but salmon and said. There you go. There you go. And the salad as it comes. 
I think today we've got it right, and I think, yeah, we'll, it's, yeah, we'll speed up service. The order definitely seems to have worked so far. The first table in have already got their food. Now, that is speedy and efficient service. Yeah. Check. The new pre-order system is proving so effective, its coordination may need a minor adjustment. What I've noticed first off is that the food's come out so quickly that the drinks are coming afterwards. <laughs> so we're uh, something that we need to sort out. <laughs> Love it. It feels like people are engaged in the business. The last time I came here, I didn't think anybody was interested. Both the same? Yeah, both medium rare. When Oliver and I arrived two months ago, it appeared Ivan and Faye had lost the drive to survive, facing intense competition and dismal lunchtime trading. Resting those steaks now, yeah? Spread out that beetroot on that bun. Yeah. You need to make sure the courgette gets spread out as well, Millie. But now their passion has been refueled, and the slow lunch service is a thing of the past, with a new menu and owners in control leading their business from the front. I've asked Phil to print some menus. Can you then ask, chase them up for me, yeah, please? Yeah. The food has improved. I think the service has improved as well. It's just a much friendlier environment all round. We had an hour lunch break. It was your ordered pre, uh, pre turning up. So um, yeah, it comes to be fit in that hour slot. Lunch was absolutely amazing, and it was so quick. Like yeah. pre-ordering is definitely the way to go. I must say. We like, literally sat down, and it was there. We carry on the way we're going. We'll have some good lunch times. As well as enticing the local office workers with a new lighter menu, the big test was being able to turn orders around within an hour's lunch break. The first thing to say, I think, is that lunch was incredibly efficient. The average time it took for food to arrive at the table was 17 minutes. Everyone was out of here and within an hour. From a financial perspective, what is the future for lunch? We will continue on this path, really promoting hard with lunchtime. The key here is to understand the competition, the environment, and what you need to do to continue to succeed in it. I do think you're right. I really do. Yeah, I agree. Someone thinks you're right, darling. It's exciting. Let's celebrate <laughs> this moment. So you should listen. <laughs> well, hopefully, we've done some good here. Um, I definitely think Faye and Ivan are more clear about what they have to do. They cannot afford to take their foot off the pedal. I really believe it's in their own hands. This is a good location with good people. They are great with customers. They want to be successful. So, yeah, good.